Perched high above the plain stands Pannonhalma, not far from Budapest. No other abbey is so closely linked to the history of a country. The Hungarians fought for a thousand years to preserve their identity, sandwiched between Turks and Habsburgers. Their first Prince Geyser asked the Benedictines to settle here and gave them the right to choose their own abbot. According to ancient Benedictine canons, the abbot is elected freely, even if he comes from the lowest rank of the Brotherhood. I think that Benedictine monastic life is influenced by the abbot's personality. The person elected has to be energetic and decisive and serve this life and brotherhood. Usually the person chosen is active, pleasant, kind and charming. After all, our order wants him to be the father caretaker and brother of the entire brotherhood. And this creates a family atmosphere that perhaps attracts people. A monk may question the church as an institute. Here, however, the abbot is also the bishop. Within the church, the monk plays the role of prophet in the sense that he can freely criticize the church and is less afraid than others to raise shortcomings for discussion. Of course, members of the monastery are also members of the church. They obey the church council and the Bishop of Rome. The same holds true for monks as for every other Christian. They listen to their conscience and to God. And if they listen to their own conscience and to God, they come into conflict with the official church. As a bishop and also as a monk, I feel that it's a monk's duty and a matter of conscience to be straightforward and to raise critical questions in certain situations. He must search for the answer with a sincere heart. Only then can he give himself and his flock an answer to set their minds at ease in keeping with the gospel. Pannonhalma also goes by a different name in Hungary, the St. Martin Monastery. The monastic seminary has made the monastery especially well known in the past decades. The monastery is also known for being established by Prince Geza and the Holy King Istvan. And it is known as a monument with its beautiful medieval church and the cloister with its Baroque elements. It is also famous because it is one of the intellectual and spiritual centers of the Hungarian Catholic Church. The year 1996 marks the thousandth anniversary of the founding of St. Martin's Monastery. Previous governments also helped restore the sanctum to the country in commemoration of its thousand years of history. The socialist government has done its share, as has the Christian Democratic Coalition in the past four years. It looks like we will continue to receive assistance so we can complete the entire restoration.
The monks took on a new calling at the beginning of the 19th century. Besides preaching, they had to teach. At the time, everything was rigorously framed in the firm lines of the classical style. Fortunately, not all the building plans were implemented. Otherwise, the bombast of the dominant style would have smothered the architectural past. St. Benedict decreed that there be a library in each monastery and that the brothers mainly be given books as sustenance during Lent. It wasn't until the end of the 11th century that the Hungarians knew that the monastery had so many books. A catalogue of the books was compiled in the time of St. Laszlo. Most of the books were lost during the Ottoman occupation. The Benedictine order started collecting books again in the 17th century. In 1802, we became a teaching order, which means that the academic education broadened in scope. A modern library had to be built. The current library was built in empire style and dates back to around 1725. These days we have 300,000 books in our collection. We purchase books, first of all, if we need them to do our work. St. Benedict told us to pray and work, ora et labora. The monks not only have to pray, they also have to nourish themselves with science and culture. The library helps us in this respect. It safeguards the old mores for the present day. Thank you. 
why the people are going to get over 3,000 lives during the three The Abbey Church has the status of a basilica. It dates from the early 13th century. Its foundation is probably Romanesque, despite the fact that the cross vault is pure Gothic, which must have clearly presented some problems during construction. In 1225, the present church was supposedly finished, but it's easy to see that some modifications were made as late as the 16th century. According to legend, Abbot Oros, the builder of the church, is depicted in one of the console heads of the crypt, but no one knows which. The oldest part of the church, the crypt, is supported by six butt-ended pillars that separate the space into nine planes. The pillars are decorated with club-shaped consoles from which Gothic ribs extend, forming the vault. Pannon Halmer has withstood the times, but many other monasteries were eliminated in 1950. After freedom was regained, 60 cloisters, both monasteries and convents, were rejuvenated. An open brotherly contact connects us with all brotherhoods. We think we can support new monastic orders with the intellectual and spiritual wealth we have. The monastic buildings contain the St. Adelbert home for the elderly, where 65 people live. Most of them are members of religious orders no longer in existence. In keeping with ancient Benedictine tradition, the elderly are treated with great respect. People do not retire here. They're free to work as long as they want, according to their own abilities. Thank you. 
65 old people, 70 monks and 360 students. Altogether there are 500 people living at Pannonhalma. There's a very special link with Monte Cassino. Every 25th of January they pray for each other. In 1950 the Benedictine Brotherhood of Hungary had 300 members. Now there are only 120, two thirds of which are over 60. But there is hope. There are 20 new seminarians. A continuity permeates our life. Connected to this country, this society, and also the Catholic Church. More and more I see this monastery's mission and job as bringing about a dialogue, acting as mediator between society and the church. This is reflected in the intellectuality which finds its roots in the oldest canons, while being receptive to new things. It also shows in our spiritual traditions and religious studies. Our brotherhood has always been open to dialogue, so as to gather knowledge for the seminary. Knowledge is, after all, vital to education. The goal of the Lyceum was that the pupils who complete their studies here help build up and support the church, both as Christians and as intellectuals. Over the decades, Pannonhalma has given this country people with an intellectual calling. There are also many who answer the call to become priests. Every graduate who thinks back on this seminar and the years he spent in the Lyceum has fond memories of the warm family feeling this brotherhood is known for. To my mind, our strength lies in this directness, this home atmosphere, and in intensified contact between teacher and pupil. Nagyon izgalmas és nagyon fontos kérdések ezek. Értjük tehát, hogy mi a különbség a leíró. During the socialist regime, it was difficult for our pupils to continue their studies. An education from Pannonhalma was often a disadvantage to pupils. But our experience taught us that pupils with ability managed to get admitted to university or another institute for advanced education after a second or third try. Things changed in 1980. And we saw that our pupils started getting into the best institutes without problems. Since then, there are few problems anymore. Thank you. 
Thank you. 